I love this new feature in Excel. You can click on a picture, choose that, and it goes inside the cell. Or if you have Insert tab, you can go to Pictures, Place in Cells, this device. And then if you navigate to all of them, you can shift click them and click Insert. And it does them all at the same time. How cool is that? There are loads of things that you can do with these images in the cells, and I'm gonna show you them in this video. My name is David Nyman, and I have tons of features on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. And I love talking about the new stuff. Well, let's go back to the inserting. If you have some text there, and you click there, then it does supersede the text. A little bit annoying at the moment. I wish it would kind of give you an error. It always does it in the top leftmost cell. So even if I'm just a little bit in that kind of top leftmost cell, it will still go into D4. So there you go, like that. Another way that you can get an image in is you can also copy it. And it can be from any, it doesn't have to be from the same Excel. And then here I can paste and I have this extra option for paste picture and cell, or if I just click there and paste, it will in initially do that, but if then the control, I can choose this option, paste picture in cell. So some really cool ways that you can deal with it. And it can also work with a formula, it can work with filters as well. So here, if you filter it, it will just show you picture except Luther. Why does it show you Luther? Because I had that as alt text before I did it. If I right click on this one, and I go to view all text, I can see that here it says Luther. Now, uh, similarly, if I was to edit this one, so this one is showing me that old text, but if I was to say this is Paris from the new Mission Impossible movie, I uh, hope you've seen it, it's really, really good, I think. <laughs> so if I was to replace that one with this one, and I would go there, Notice it's the leftmost cell. Now if I filter it here, it will show me Paris there as well. And I can filter it like this. We're going to see how it works with formulas as well. Um, now if I go to uh, this tab, you can actually edit your alt text directly within this one. So here if I go to view alt text, you can edit it here. Um, but here I've put in alt text for all of them. So if I add in my filters, control shift L, I can see all of them are showing there. Except for the blanks, what's the blanks? That's showing me Paris. So I can just control V there. So now if I were to go into data and in filter, I choose reapply, it would now give me none of the blanks. Perfect. So here you have alt text, which we already saw, picture and cell, you have three options. So placeover cells, that will just do the same as clicking this. You can also get to it the other way from right clicking or like this is super, super straightforward. Then you also have create reference, and create reference will make a referenced picture of this. Um, now this is a linked thing, so if I was to delete that, it would show me something like this. If I was to type some text over it, or a number, it also wouldn't show. But if I was to say copy and paste from cell to cell, it would now show me the updated one that is in there. So let me just undo that, keep my Luther, and other things that you can do on the right click are show image details. This just shows you a one second pop up. If you click out, it goes away. So if you click on one of these pictures, you don't get the usual picture format tab, but let's uh, add some filters and do something else. So let's uh, sort them the other way around. For example, yeah, let's take this person. So you can place her outside of the cell. And then if you go to picture format, you can do things like make it blurry like that. So after that, I'm also maybe going to crop it like that. And I'm going to do some recoloring, kind of like that. And transparency, all of these things that are kind of newish uh, features, like transparency is brand new. And even corrections, you have all this. By the way, you do have this place in cell. This is an Excel only thing that just came out. That's another way you can do it. So there's all sorts of picture amendments that you can do. Now, in the regular Excel, if you have it outside of the cell, you can go to Reset Picture, and it will do that. But let me undo that and copy and paste it so that this one stays outside of the cell, and this one we're going to put back in the cell. Um, now that goes away, but if I was to take it out, now I cannot Reset Picture. So it's hard-coded in all of these changes. Um, also remove background, which I wouldn't advise doing this in Excel or PowerPoint because there's other apps that do it way better. Um, that will work as well. But yeah, that's something to bear in mind. 
So I'm going to click here and reset picture and then go here and put it back in the cell. By the way, you can't multi-select. By the way, if you multi-select and then go to this thing, it will take all of them outside of the cell at the same time. But if you were to multi-select and then click on that button or right click and place in cell, it doesn't actually appear there, it will not work. So it only works one by one if you go from picture outside of cells to inside of cells, but the other way around if you do otherwise. And notice if you undo, it undoes one by one, which is pretty cool. That's a pretty good way to do it. So um, yeah, what about if you wanted to use them in formulas? So here, you can also do an image from a URL. So you have this function equals image, and that will take first the source, then the alt text, then some sizing stuff. So in this case, it keeps the original sizing, but maybe we want it stretched so that it's all the same. Probably wouldn't advise that, but I know there are a lot of people do that. So if you write equals image, then this is a new function, but it's in all versions of Microsoft 365 now, not just the beta version. Image will give you that, but you can say alt text is going to be Iron Man, and then comma sizing, you can say fill cell, and then it will do it like that based on however your cell is. Or if you don't want that, you can press custom size three and then comma, you can say whatever height you want. There you go. So it will not fill it out correctly, but you can have complete control over that if that's what you want. So let's look at how it works with formulas. So here I have uh, VLOOKUP and that works as does some if. So let's recreate these. So here, I'm going to insert some blank ones and I'm going to say equals VLOOKUP this value in all of this one, F4, comma, say sales is going to be three, comma, zero, and then it will give me 51 because that first instance is 51 and that one is as well. And if I was to have, for example, an Iron Man, so I can copy this one and I can also paste as values this will now convert it into an image that I can pop in and out as I need. And you can drag that down and this will give me 90, which is the first instance of Iron Man, 92 there. So that also works with XLOOKUP. If you're still using VLOOKUPs and you have Office 365, which you have to for this, then really just move to XLOOKUP. It's so much better. You choose this one, F4, and then you can choose any column. So it can be even in this direction, F4. And you don't need to say what happens if it's false. Perfect. So what about some ifs? Here we have multiple ones. So I can also do that. I can, uh, let's insert another column here. So I can say total cost equals some ifs. I can say, give me the sum range, F4, where the criteria range is this, F4 comma, and the criteria is this image. That will give me 51. Note that there is only one instance, so that's the same. And for cap, it's the same, but here Iron Man has many, so it gives me the total there. Perfect. So what about pivot tables? So pivot tables is also something that recently got updated to do. So if I insert a pivot table like this in an existing worksheet, and I press OK, now I can put in image, and it will put them in there, and cells will just sum them up, kind of getting similar results, 295 to here. So still works as you might expect, um, this is an, a new recent addition. Another way that you can get images in cells is you can also uh, do something with country names. So if I write, for example, USA, UK, France, Spain, and I select these and I go to data and I can convert these into geography data types. Press OK there. This is pretty cool. It can show you all of these things. For example, the population, the GDP per capita, as you can see, it has the flag there. So I can add the image of that thing, which is the flag in this case, or I can do it in multi-select ways. I can add image as well, or I can also do equals this one dot and then type in image, and this will work as well. Uh, these will then go into pivot tables, and even if I do, for example, from here, I'm going to add uh, forested area percentage, and then I can say here country uh, flag and forested. By the way, 
if this is in a table from insert table, press OK, then if you add something, it will automatically come up with that header and do it for all of them. So tables are great for a lot of reasons, including that. But if I insert a pivot table here in a new worksheet like that, then you can now get the flag, as we know, and you can also get the country, and it would also have this associated with it. So that will stay there even when you have a pivot table. So if I click on here, I can't add them, but I can see the card as the pop-up. It's another new addition only in Excel for Insiders. The equals image is available to everyone, though, uh, all Office 365 customers. But sometimes if you use equals image, you do get this error appearing. So if I do this one, enter, it might give me these hashtags. If I expand it, it's blocked. Uh, it does maybe depend on the type of image that you have, but I found that that happens a fair amount. So uh, do be aware of that. You can also create QR codes. So here, if you do um, a way to convert a website into a QR code using this Google APIs, chart.google APIs with this code, I'll put this code in the description below if this is something you're interested in. I actually love doing this, creating QR codes just from a place. And then once you've got it, you can just pop it out of the cell like that, which is really, really great. And then paste it wherever you want or save as picture. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, my name is Dave Benayman. I have tons of videos on my channel about Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So give this video a like if you learned something new today. Uh, Oh, just uh, one thing on version. So to check which version you have, if you go to file and then account, if you don't have Microsoft 365, then you won't get this feature at the time of making this video. If you're watching this in 2029, then it will be available to you, I'm sure. Um, always update and check you have the most up-to-date version. There you go. I do like that. All right, great. So I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching.